Hello everyone. Today we're walking around a wildflower meadow with Natural Resources Branch Chief Jason Wagner. Hello. Uh, this video takes place at the end of Nash Boulevard adjacent to County Route 26. Uh, if you've been here a while at Fort Drum then you may remember four years ago this was just a large scotch pine plantation um, that was planted back in the 50s. Uh, when the plan was developed for the new bridge over Route 26 to connect the airfield with the cantonment area, a large part of this forest needed to be cut. The remaining trees were also starting to get tall enough to be in the height safety zone for the end of the main airfield runway. So we decided to cut the entire area, and instead of replanting trees that would just grow back up into that safety zone again, uh, we decided to turn this into a wildflower field. The entire area is about 12 acres. Uh, we came in and ground out the stumps and divided the field up into strips and planted half in year one and the other half in year two. As you can see from the photos, we've been having good success even though this is a dry and sandy site. As we continue to learn about our local native pollinators and the best way to create habitat for them, We've had to change our process in the field. This year, thanks to COVID-19, our seeds did not arrive in time for spring planting. Good news, perennial wildflower seeds are, are said to be just as viable planting them in the fall and allowing them to overwinter. So we will be trying that this fall. Uh, we've historically spread seed mixtures of different plant types across the entire area. As you can see here in this, in, in this shot, there's a mosaic, or there's a, there's a variety of flowers all sprinkled throughout. Uh, and that was because we got our seed in mixed batches. Uh, we have learned recently that when you're a pollinator and you're flying from one, and, you're, and you're, you're taking pollen from one flower, one species of flower, if you continue across this field, you got to go a long ways and sometimes to get to that same flower. So this fall, we're going to plant monocultures of each flower type in a mosaic across the field. This will allow those uh, pollinators to be able to not fly far between the same type of flower they're, they're collecting pollen from each day. We try to focus on different plants that flower at different times of the year. So there's always something flowering throughout the whole season. As you can see, this year, two this is year two for the strips that are blooming now, and our perennials have all made it and are doing well. Uh, the greener strips is what we will rototill and plant this fall. Over 75% of all flowering plants are pollinated by animals. Plants are the foundation of the terrestrial food chain. The foliage and fruits and nuts that plants make are eaten by herbivores, which turn around and are hunted by predators. Furthermore, plants provide shelter and nesting habitat for many different animal species. So in order to maintain the diversity of our natural ecosystems, we need healthy pollinator populations to ensure the next generation of plants will be produced. Now this isn't just what we typically call honeybees and butterflies. Uh, most native pollinators are, are solitary. Um, solitary bees and wasps. Uh, they don't form big hives. Uh, a lot of them live in the in the soil. Um, and they just dig a small hole in the soil and live there for their life. So as you can see in this video, there is a lot of bare ground and that's purposeful. We, we're, we're trying to not grow a, a lush green grass. We are trying to keep some of that uh, open space. And you might notice some piles across the meadow as well. Uh, there's some rocks that we picked up to get out of the way of our equipment while we worked on the field. Uh, there's some old logs that were there. And when we just put those in a pile, we left them on site. Uh, we made a big enough pile that we could see it if we run our tractor around so we don't hit it. But that pile also turns into more habitat for nesting of the pollinators. So 
So we decided to do this operation on a large scale to demonstrate what can be done to help native pollinators in the region. As development occurs and everyone cuts down native vegetation and replaces it with nice green grass, more and more habitat, old weedy fields, is lost. Mowing yards from the edge of the road all the way to the wood line makes a giant desert for pollinators. There are hundreds of native pollinators that depend on a variety of native plants throughout the year, and between urbanization and agriculture, that variety is wiped out. Pesticide use also played a big role in impacting pollinator populations. All of these are concerns to land managers because we do not want to see any of them become endangered. Army land managers focus on ways to avoid endangered species listings so we do not have any negative impacts to the tree mission. Diverse, robust, and resilient natural habitats are critical to keep our soldiers training without restrictions. Everyone who owns their own property can help, and you don't need to create a whole field to do it. Just replacing a small patch of your yard with either a managed flower garden or just rip up the sod and sprinkle perennial wildflowers seeds can make a difference. Please come out to our wildflower field throughout the year and enjoy the site as the different flowers bloom. And remember, one out of every three bites of food you eat isn't possible without pollinators.